Welcome, this is Tuesday the 7th of February 2012 and this is Simply the Truth live with me, Doug Harris. Thank you for joining us. You are as important as those of us here in the studio and here in the studio tonight we are with our first hour-long program for a while so uh, all those as I've said before that, that love Simply the Truth are s s sitting there whooping all those that don't like it are saying, oh no, not an hour of him. But anyway, it's not just me. Uh, and who else, for those of you that have known my past programs, who else could I invite uh, onto the first program than my old mate, Mr. Marmite himself, JT? Hiya, Doug. It's Hiya. a privilege to be on your first hour program. Absolutely. And for those of you who don't get the Marmite joke, you either love him or hate him. And uh, I love him. Don't always agree with him. And I think tonight we'll see that. Um, but uh, great to, to have you with Good us, JT. Here, doing you. fine? I'm doing fine. It's flipping cold in New Malden, though. It I've is. I've got to say. You have. Well, if you've got to say it, you've got to say it. Mm. But... Uh, what um, we're surrounded by tonight uh, is protection. I, I don't know what they're trying to protect us from, but <laughs> obviously I think you would understand that what we're dealing with tonight, as you look at uh, what we see here, we are dealing with the armour of God. Ephesians chapter 6, we're going to be looking at that in, in, in just a moment. We'll read that and we're going to get into it. Um, the texts and the emails will be open and we want to hear from you with your questions. Do you agree with what you say? Do, we, do you disagree? Have you got questions on Ephesians chapter 6 to do with the armour, verse 10 onwards? Um, uh, do uh, text in 07781472847, email live at TV. Dot com. Those uh, details will be up on the screen. I think many of you know it. Uh, so please do interact with us as we are going to look at Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to read the passage in just a minute. But before we do, JT, <clears throat> um, I, I, I know you've, you've had a real interest in, 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 in Roman antiquity and that. Salute. <laughs> Whatever that means, great. Um, why... why this uh, armour here, why your interest in those areas? Well, it all started in junior school, Doug, and I blame Ladybird Books <laughs> at, the back, at, the back, <laughs> at the back of my classroom in junior school were uh, a whole row of Ladybird Books, mainly about history, and there were two or three of them which were about Romans, and my, my interest and passion uh, for all things Roman started then. But of course, when I, when I became a Christian, when I was 12, I then discovered, of course, that Roman history and Bible history were sort of interlinked. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, some of the New Testament mm -hmm. is based in Rome. One of the books is written to Christians in Rome. And most of it, or yeah, pretty well all of it, was based inside the Roman Empire. So, hey... Ephesians 6 for me, Doug, is the coming together of two wonderful things, <laughs> Romans and the Bible. Right. And because <clears throat> uh, I, know, I know when you come up here sometimes, you yeah. spend all day at the British Museum. That's and, right, and, uh, that's right. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. But, uh, I mean, you, you borrowed this armour for tonight, and we, we're very grateful for the people that yeah. have lent it to I us. I would like to thank Cairo Leon, Welsh Le uh, Legionary Museum, and if anybody's in Wales, they've got to go to Carleon Museum. It's free. Where and is it? Carleon, just north of Newport, mm -hmm. just a few miles outside of mm -hmm. Newport. The Second Augustan Legion were based there. For, well, the, there was a fort there for 200 years. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to that, they were in Exeter. Uh, and then they moved into Wales to conquer us Welsh geezers. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so they've lent us this. There's only one piece of armour they've not given us. What was that? The, the, the sword, the gladius. And they, they wouldn't they trust you well, with they it? they looked at me and they said, <laughs> you are not having a sword. <laughs> <laughs> and then they mumbled on about health and safety and regulations. Yeah, yeah. So I wasn't going to argue with them. Right. You know. But we, we've got the rest and we'll be <clears throat> showing it off uh, tonight as we go through uh, the programme because I, I think it's very interesting to see um, <clears throat> the, the, these issues and, 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 and what it is and we'll be, uh, why it's so important. Um, how can we be sure, though, that, that this is the armour talked of in Ephesians 6? All right. Well, <clears throat> very often when you see 
pictorial representations of Ephesians 6, the most usual picture is a knight in shining armour. Mm. Uh, and we'd be talking 1200s, 1300s, that sort of period. Well, when Ephesians was written, Paul was under house arrest in Rome. And um, that means there would have been a guard with him. He, he also talks about, in Philippians, I think it is, he talks about, um, uh, you know, I, would, I, I would like you to be the same as me except for these chains. So it's more likely that he was actually chained to a guard. Even if he wasn't, um, there certainly would have been a guard on the door. And the, the uniform, it would have been slightly different to this because it would have been what's called a Praetorian uniform, the people who were in Rome, the, the legionaries that were in Rome, but very, very similar. So this is early imperial, uh, first century Roman armor, Roman legionaries armor. So it bears all the same hallmarks that uh, a soldier would have been mm. standing right <coughs> next to the Apostle Paul. Okay. Um, we're going to read uh, the, these verses. Just, okay. just for you, uh, just uh, um, Alan texts in and says, Marmite every time for me, Doug, JT talks sense. So nice one, Alan. Uh, <laughs> We'll see whether you agree with that <laughs> after we finish. But let, let's read these scriptures. Let's get into the scriptures. Ephesians chapter 6, we'll pick it up at, at verse 10. Um, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armour of God, that you may be able to stand, withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always and with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to the end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, the utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Um, Maybe just before we get on and we want to look at each item of the armour and, and, and what that yep. means to us and, and what we need to learn and the reality of, of, of what it is. I mean, th th this is obviously talking about this Roman Praetorium Guard or Legionnaire or yeah, whatever yeah, you, legionnaire. You, you said. I mean, are, are there lessons that we could actually learn from the Roman army in general? Yes, there are. And I think tonight, Doug, we'll probably obviously be drawing out of the passage directly things but I think as well um, there are just useful lessons to learn from the Roman army okay like um, it's interesting that Ephesians particularly and this passage is not about a single person we're not talking about one soldier here we're not talking about uh, uh, Paul giving us instructions as, as an individual Ephesians is a you book, uh, is a we book. It's not an I thing. It's not about the individual. And all the, all the pronouns are plural. And one remarkable thing about the Roman army, now this is a little bit of history now, and I'm going to enjoy telling this story, okay? I can see the okay. twinkling in your eye. Can you see it coming? You see it coming? <laughs> um, the, the Roman army was a remarkable fighting force. And they were not equaled and would not have been equaled until the invention of uh, gunpowder. So when you think of, you know, uh, the Normans and the Saxons at the uh, Battle of Hastings, they wouldn't have stood a chance against the Romans. Um, neither would any of the, most of the medieval armies. But anyway, um, in this country, uh, there, was a, there was a period of time when the Romans almost lost control, and that was the revolt under a person people call Boudicca. Boudicca is the better way. 
And I just want to put in a plug here. She was Welsh, okay? She spoke a primitive form of Welsh because the, the ancient Britons were the Cymry. They were us, okay? Just so people out there know. Anyway, she'd gathered together around about 100,000. Could have been more, okay? And uh, she sacked Colchester, Camelodon in the capital, sacked London, and you can, you can go to um, London and see the, the level of burning that took place. And then finally, she headed to face the legions. And there were two legions that were up in Anglesey, duffing up the Druids. So they sorted out the Druids, and they headed back. So that was all that stood between the collapse of Roman Britain. So there were 10,000 Romans, approximately, and uh, easily 100,000 Britons. And uh, it was, you'd think, oh, who would win that one then? Yeah. Well, let me ask you another question. Who would win between a Roman legionary and um, an ancient British warrior? Who do you think would win? Well, I, I mean, obviously, otherwise you wouldn't be telling the story. I, I mean, the, the, the Roman legionary. Absolutely not. <laughs> That's what you wanted me to say, mm. wasn't on it? A, on a one-to-one, yeah, <laughs> on a one-to-one, -one, uh, Roman soldiers weren't mm. um, individual, they were gladiators, they weren't even warriors, they were soldiers. So on a one-to-one -one basis, they wouldn't stand much of a chance against a really competent and probably bigger uh, British warrior or G Germanic tribesman or something. But when you put 10,000 Romans against 100,000 British, there's a different dynamic at work. It's the dynamic of organization. It's the dynamic of um, resourcing and equipment, discipline, um, good commanders, knowing what to do and standing firm, all that sort of thing. And do you know who won the battle? Yeah. The Romans did. Yes. And ten to one. Uh, ten to one, easily. And it could even have been twenty to one. We, mm -hmm. we can't be certain. Um, and they they simply stood in line, formed wedges with the shields, moved forward, and just plowed the, the British. They they put carts at the back so they couldn't retreat. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, it was ten to one. And so, so like one of the biggest lessons we can learn from this the fact that the passage is plural, and uh, it's when you think of the, when Paul was thinking of Romans, you wouldn't just think of the guy with him. Yes, right. You'd think of the, the army. army, and it, what an impressive. Whatever you think of Romans, what an impressive outfit. And I'm, I'm a pacifist, but I'm also interested in war. Strange mm. thing I know, but the Roman army, as many people tell you, is one impressive uh, fighting force. So on one level, and of course, much of the Ephesian letter is about the church is about the body of Christ. Mm. And, and so on one level, what you're saying there is our strength is in our unity standing together. Our, mm. our, uh, and and I, I guess that goes back to, 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 to the Old Testament, that the, the blessing is mm. where um, there is the unity, where, where, where folks are standing together. Yeah, and, and of course, the, the key verse in Ephesians is the one in Ephesians chapter 3, where it talks about the, the many-sided wisdom of God being made known, not through individual Christians, but through the church. Yes. And the, <coughs> you, you think, how, how, how does that work? Well, imagine, you've got the poor, you've got the slaves, this is first century now, you've got rich merchants, you've got Romans, you've got Greeks, you've got uh, ex uh, you know, Jewish people, you've got all sorts in this, th and today you've got exactly the same thing, mm. and this is God's wisdom. Mm. And the, the parallel is with the Pax Romana, which is the Roman peace, uh, you had all these nations that uh, were bound together because it was beneficial for them, mm. and uh, uh, you know, Roman rule effectively. And, and I, I guess also if we draw out from that analogy that you've just given us, it, w we clearly also see that the body of Christ isn't because I've signed on the dotted line and you've signed on the dotted line and we happen to be in the same place mm. at the same time singing the same hymn, but we actually are standing together and we are choosing to be together as the body of Christ. And that's a very different thing to what is an organization in the sense mm. of just of a church, isn't it? Yes, that's right. What we call the church. Yeah, um, it's certainly, uh, we're not talking about a denomination now. We're talking about the organic, the relational body of Christ. And uh, of course, we should stand together. We should support each other. And there are lots of lessons in the passage. Sadly, we often don't. That's a tragedy.
Okay, so we, we really do want to underline that aspect of it and, and really to st stand together is, is, is where our strength is. Mm. However, isn't it also true, though, that the armour is for an individual? Though, so although there is this wider one, isn't Paul also now coming down and saying this armour is for each individual? Well, yes, he certainly is. But if, if in... We all have a responsibility because we're all part of the body of Christ. We're all, um, we're all part of that, that corporate Christ, if you like. Um, it, the body has many parts, so it is with Christ, Paul says in, in Corinthians. I'll just say that again. The body has many parts, so it is with Christ. Not with the church, with Christ. Mm -hmm. So in, in some mm -hmm. sense, we are, we are part of who Jesus is, and we have responsibilities uh, to live righteously, to serve him, to be open to the, the voice of the Holy Spirit. And all these lessons come up in this passage. Um, but, but also, the weakness of one can affect the safety of others. Mm. So uh, even in saying that there are individual responsibilities, um, we, we must never lose sight of the fact that we are part of something bigger. Mm -hmm. Every single Roman soldier knew the man who would stand next to him that side and that side, in, in battle and in marching and who would sleep next to him that side and that side in, in mm -hmm. back of the barracks, you know. It was, they knew their place. It wasn't just mm -hmm. one person. Mm -hmm. So w we, we've got the corporate, we've got the individual. We, 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 we've got both here. Um, when we begin to read it, and it always fascinates me that it actually says this is the armour of God. Now, in other words, it has to originate with him, does it not? I mean, this isn't something we can just make up ourselves. It, it has to be something that, that, that he reveals and gives. The viewers need to know that we disagreed over this earlier, yes, didn't we? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. We almost <laughs> came to blows, but I had the armour, so you backed off, I remember. Uh, At that time. <laughs> um, yeah, obviously. The, um, it says it's the armour of God. Now, I take the view that it's the, it's the armour that God provides. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it's, it's, it's armour which it, it isn't made up. It's not of our own making. Uh, the battle isn't of our own making either. Yeah. Uh, and, the, and the place that we find ourselves. So this armour has been provided by God and um, we are to realise that it's not Rambo here. It's us serving in the army of King Jesus. And um, uh, this is what we've got today is a representation of that. Yeah. And, and again, just before we get on to the individual parts, um, what also strikes me is, is it talks about that this armour of God is given to us so that we can be strong and stand. Um, and uh, whereas, yes, you, you've got the sword, which is an offensive weapon, mm -hmm. um, the, the whole purpose of this seems to be able to stand against the onslaught, the mm -hmm. wiles, the, the schemes mm -hmm. of Satan. And let's face it, those schemes are manifest and, and all sorts of things. I've got a comment to make about those schemes. Good, good. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> but uh, I'll be very surprised if you didn't. But, but it, it, this seems to be that what he, initially what we are to do is to stand and stand firm. And, and that seems to be what God wants. Mm, absolutely. And you would, you would find, when you looked at uh, a Roman legion, uh, they would be standing. Mm. And later in the battle, they would move slowly forward. But the, you, you would just get this impression of, of a wall of men. Uh, obviously, we'll come to the shield aspect later. But the, and in terms of being a Christian, standing on who Jesus is, standing on the truth that he's given us and declared us to be um, is really what it's all about. And if we stand on that firm ground, we can't be moved. Part of the problem is that we keep shifting because we rely on what we feel like. Like when I, when I, when I was a young Christian, I used to keep a graph of my Christian life. Why, why would a 13-year-old do that? And, of course, what was I actually graphing? Was it my knowledge? No. Was it my um, growth of friendship in Christian circles? No. What was it? It was my emotions. Mm. So 
in my assessment of my Christian life, I wasn't assessing whether I was closer to Jesus or not. I was assessing what my emotions were. And I was 13 years old, so it went off the bottom of the page quite often, <laughs> you know. But it, it's, I, I come across mm. grown-up Christians and grown-up people who are Christians who are like that. Mm. And uh, they are easily shaken. I, you know, you might get it as well. People will say, oh, Oh, I've, I've heard something. I've, is that true? Is that true? And all of a sudden, their faith is completely mm. uh, at sea, and they just need a comforting answer. Whereas, well, if we know the reality, we know the reality. Yeah. Uh, let's just remind you that we're live tonight. Uh, the first of the new series of Simply the Truth. One hour. Uh, we started at seven. We'll be finishing uh, just before eight o'clock. So, because we're live, please do get your texts in. Please do get your emails in, 07781472847. Email live at revelationtv.com. And Anne has done that. Anne says, the sword, the word of God, double-edged. One side, the written word, and the other, the spoken word. Well, yeah, you'll probably disagree with that. Well, come on. Um, uh, the, um, hi, I hate Marmite, but I love JT. <laughs> uh, now, Doug, one hour, good, still too short for you. Well, I, I'm, I'm glad we've got an hour, and that's, uh, that, that's great. Um, you said you had a comment about uh, the, the, the schemes, the wiles. The wiles, yeah, said. yeah, well, yeah. What, what, <laughs> what, what's your comment on well, that? The New Testament in this passage was written in Greek, okay? So I can exclusively reveal on Revelation TV... Okay, there should be a drum roll coming in now, right? Yep, yep. I can exclusively reveal what denominations that the devil is. Go on then. Okay, I can reveal to the world, exclusive tonight, yes, Jan February the seventh, two thousand and twelve, that the devil is a Methodist. <laughs> because you just realised we've lost <laughs> half our audience. <laughs> because the word is methodia. Yes. And. Uh, um, just as the early Methodists were methodic in their godliness and in their devotion to Jesus and, the, and they were disciplined in their timing mm. uh, and had planned their path of following Jesus, likewise, it's not arbitrary and it's That's not right. random right. with the devil. He, he and all those with him know exactly what they're doing. And there have been occasions when I have felt that the work of the enemy in my life isn't like cannons, it's like snipers on the hills mm, mm. because they, you know, know where to target. Yes. And um, the lessons that we learn from the armour of God in this passage will help us to deal with those and things. And of course, uh, we will come on to it, but of course it does talk about the fiery darts, ah, which are right. very much like the sniper. It's not the machine gun mm -hmm. fire, it's not the battering ram in one sense, yeah. it, it's those fiery darts. And, and I, guess we're, I, I guess we're all more susceptible to that just the little things, the flaming that, arrows, the, the, the flaming yeah. arrows flaming that, arrows. that come in um, from it's that. Those point flaming of view. arrows, I'm telling you. <laughs> so we're able to stand, and and I guess uh, that is because stand like the Roman legion, but I think also to stand in Christ, because we're living in days where I guess some people uh, find it maybe easy, find it difficult to actually stand, and and mm. w and and not just witness in word, but just mm. stand that hey, I, I I am for Christ. But we're not meant to be alone. Absolutely. The point of this passage yes. is that we're not meant to be standing alone. Except at the same time, in reality, of course, we're not standing alone. But there are times when you're in the workplace where you're the only Christian. Now. Christ is still with you, you, you're, you are still part of the body of Christ, mm -hmm. but some people still need to know that reality, they do. even standing in that situation. Absolutely, but the, the importance of our connection with other believers, mm. even if we have to wait till the end of the day or until we can get on our phone, yeah. th that is so important for us. Mm. And it's been a joy to me sometimes. I, I lead a group, uh, or one of the leaders of a group, I founded a group I did called Tri, which we've talked about before, a lot of young people. And I, believe it or not, I get phone calls sometimes. Uh, and one of them s rang me up and said, JT, I'm at a bus stop. I'm talking to this fella. Uh, what do you sh I want you to talk to him and tell him how do you know the Bible's true. Uh, and she was completely aware yeah. that she wasn't alone. I don't just mean yes. that Jesus was with her, yeah. but that she had the resource of yes. all the people that she knew as well. Yes. And we need to be aware of that. Yes. You know, please pray for me. I'm just about to have a difficult yes. interview. Um, you know, uh, I need and some advice, this sort I, of thing. I have to, I've had it the other way around, where, where I'm 
going through a particularly difficult patch mm -hmm. and I suddenly get an email or a text from somebody that says, that. hey, yeah. I, I've, just, I've just been thinking of you. I'm really just yeah. praying for you. Yeah. And you think, yeah, you know, we are connected mm -hmm. in, 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 in the Holy Spirit. And, and we need to realize that. Yeah. We're, we're never yeah. individuals in that sense. No, indeed. And, and I remember I was, some years ago, I was taken very ill before I was to go to Zambia. I was leading a team and it was, would have caused chaos. But the doctor said, I can't go. I was too ill. I really, really was very bad. I'd never been that ill, really. And um, I called the elders to pray. That was the other members of the yes. team that we had. And they noticed me with all. And they represented the church. They represented the 80 people or so that were in the church at that time. So they came to my dining room and they anointed me with oil. And I, I felt that it wasn't just them. Mm. You know, the whole church knew I was ill, but they were representing the all of time. those people. Yeah. And um, I was healed and got better. And Amen. it was very miraculous and it was Amen. wonderful. And it was just a real sense of I was part of the body of Christ. Yeah. You know? So very much in this, we need to know that we're together and we never are to run off on our own and do our own thing. We're, we're together. That's where our strength is. Yep. That's, that, that, that's where it is. And yet, we, each one of us needs to know this armour and the reality of it. So let's, let, let, let's get down to it. And uh, the first part that we, that, that we come to, after it says, take, it up, take up the whole armour of God, uh, that you may be able to stand. Verse 14 says, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, or this, this belt of truth, which... We have here this belt and we'll be seeing uh, other parts that are wonderfully uh, displayed by Luke uh, in, in wonderful fashion. He, he looks a real Roman, doesn't he? <laughs> Apart from the jeans, he looks great. But this is the, 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 the belt of truth. Um, okay, begin to unpack. What, what are we talking about here, okay. JT? The, the, it's strange. It, it's, a, it's significant. Paul starts with this item. It's, it's more like... Batman's utility belt, <laughs> all right? <laughs> to, to a Roman, the, the belt, the kingulum, and we have it in front of the table tonight, and it's been modelled yeah. uh, earlier on with, uh, with, with Luke. Um, the kingulum was really important for a few reasons. Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, in combat particularly, on, on the left-hand side, you would have the dagger, and you can see where the dagger sheath yeah. is yeah. on our table here tonight. Yeah. The other side, you'd have the sword, the sword. and then on a, on, a mar on a march, you'd have an awful lot of things dangling off the belt. So you'd have uh, various items, tools, a cup, all sorts of things like that. And of course, um, not wishing to be too sensitive here, um, the belt modestly protects items of a human anatomy, right. which people can work up for themselves, yeah. but this is a family show. So anyway, the... Um, so the kingdom was quite important, the belt was important. But what does that mean for us? Mm. The belt of truth. Now, there's different ways to understand this. But I would, I would say that what Paul is saying to us is, if we do not live our lives in truthfulness and integrity, um, it will disrupt and affect our whole Christian walk. That we are to be people of truth. And if we are deceptive, if we are, uh, have double standards, if we are people who, who people cannot trust what we say and do, then much of the rest of what we say we are doesn't have any credibility. We won't be able to use the sword of the spirit properly because we haven't got the belt of truth. So this, I believe, shows the really central, important place of us being people of truth and not being deceptive, not lying, do not lie to one another. And in terms of the world looking on to us and, if, and the devil looking for opportunity to get to us, because if we do lie and if we do deceive, be sure that your sins will find you out. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the lesson of the belt of truth. Mm. You see, I, I, I find it very interesting and I doubt if too many commentaries would take it that way, but as we were chatting about this earlier on, um, but. What, I, I guess the way I've seen it, and I, I, I think it, it, to me, it very much, although it sounds quite different, it very much comes down to the same thing, is this, to me, Jesus himself said, I am truth. In other words, they're, they're, in, in the end, he, he is the one that sums up all the truth. 
and it's it, 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 it's it, it's the armor of God. Now, when that truth, when we come to know Him as truth, mm. our character changes to express that truth. Right. Um, but I wonder, you see, I, I, I guess my, my problem with this, and uh, help, help me here, JT, as you see, I, I am never going to be truthful by myself unless the Holy Spirit works within me. I'm all, you know, I'm always going to have the propensity to lie. I'm always going to have the propensity to cover mm. up. Um, so do you not think it, 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 however, what you're saying is true, that's what the manifestation is outwardly, mm. but do you not think something has got to be worked in us? Well, obviously, we're not talking about truth in the general sense. We're talking about Christians who are living uh, with the foundation of Jesus in their life, the work of the Holy Spirit, the freedom and grace that God gives us. Um, and, you know, I, I, I can run with much of what you've said, but I, I just feel that the passage is talking about our, if you like, practical living responses. Mm -hmm. It comes up again when we do the breastplate as yes, well. Yes, yes. Um, so, uh, like, the, the, word, the word truth is aletheia, um, and there is the truth, which is the body of Christian teaching, I suppose, but then um, Paul on a number of occasions talks about living, not lying to each other, speaking the truth in love, well, of course, all, of all that is in Ephesians. Yeah. I, I was just, and, and, and I, I do have to agree, it, it, it does say, I think, uh, you know, stop lying and speak mm. the truth in love. And, you know, if you used to tell lies, don't do it yeah. anymore. Yeah. So, in other words, there is that aspect. And I guess if, it, it, if our lives are not characterized by truth, the one thing we can say is we don't really know the reality of the armor of God. And we need to get back there and say, mm. Lord, this isn't my sort of character. This mm. isn't what I am. Now, I need to know something mm. from you so I can be that character that's truthful that's real, and can be relied on. Yeah, and, and if, if, a, if a Roman legionary didn't wear the belt, th there's a lot of things he wouldn't have, mm. bluntly. Yes. You wouldn't have the dagger, you wouldn't have the sword on a march, you wouldn't be able to hang stuff off it, and yes. you would probably be very ill-equipped the next time there's, a, there's combat. I think that's that behind it is there is that lesson mm. that um, a foundation, a central part of what we are as Christians, uh, is is to be truthful people, and um, yeah, uh, I, I I can't say more than that really. No, I, I mean I, it, it always. I, I, whenever we talk about things like this, it always comes back to me um, uh, the, 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 the the whole story of of, of Jacob. And, uh, you know, when, he, you know when, w w when he went to his father and his father said, who are you? And he, he, he said, I'm Esau. Yeah. And at that point, um, it, it's almost as if all his trouble started until he gets to the Ford Jabbok many years later. And, and the Lord's, you know, when he's wrestling with him, very, yeah. you know, yeah. with real parallels, he's wrestling with his angel and the angel says, what's your name? <laughs> and he knew who he was. That's and right. he finally says... I'm Jacob, mm, mm. Uh, and, and and God begins to work in his life as a result of that. And I do think, I think if there is a propensity to lie, if there's a propensity mm. not to be true, I don't think God can actually... So you're mm, talking sure. about it being the foundation. It is the foundation. God can't really work mm. in our lives unless we're truthful. A little example, I know of a situation where someone has got a bit of an issue with a church leader. But he hasn't been honest with that church leader. Right. He's not been he's not been straight with him. You know, he's not been upfront. And if that person expects to be uh, serving God, moving into leadership responsibility, uh, ministry, or whatever else, well, it's not going to happen mm -hmm. because he hasn't put the belt of truth on. Absolutely. And it'll break the relationship. Yeah. And there's lack of credibility in his life, and the enemy will take advantage of it. So that's the foundational piece, mm -hmm. and if we're not, we better start there because yeah. we can't start anywhere else, really. That's right. Um, but let's move on because otherwise we're, we're not going to get through it all tonight. Um, I, I did actually take about three or four months when I preached through this, but don't worry <laughs> about it. Um, the breastplate of righteousness. Right, this okay. is the second part, this so, whole yeah. breastplate of righteousness. I may have to pick it up. I, I think we'll probably move out of shot. If, uh, do, okay. do you need to pick it up? Well, I was just, okay. I was okay. just going to point. Yeah. Well, 
Uh, look, there, there it was. It was just on the screen yes. just now. All right. The breast, the it's lorica. Back again there, there we now. are. Lorica segmentatum. I believe you. Okay. Um, that's the Latin word for that type of armor. Segmentatum, segments? Segments, yeah. yeah. Lorica, bless, breastplate. In fact, there's a famous prayer attributed to Patrick called the Lorica breastplate prayer. Okay. Um, anyway, the, this, this was an archetypal first century Roman bit of armor. You see it in the film sometimes. And interestingly, just a, on a historical point here, that the, this Lorica armor is, uh, you, you've seen chainmail where, like in a solid one piece yes, with little rings yes. of metal. Well, that armor is, is a it, third as yes, light. Yes. It's, you know, a Lorica, um, uh, the one which is chainmail, a Lorica Hamata, would be three times as heavy right. as this. Right. It was, it's much harder to maintain because you've got lots of little joints. If you look carefully, yeah, it's got little, little there almost like Luke, little, yeah, oh, there we are, it's got little buckles yeah, and stuff. Miss, yeah, we can see that. That's right. Yes. So it's, it's really um, an amazing piece and it, it mm. bends with the body and everything. Mm. Now, uh, what, what, is, what lessons can we learn from this? Well, um, it says, let me read my translation, New, so. New Century Version, okay? Yes. It says, um, uh, stand strong with the belt of truth tied around your waist and the protection of right living on your chest. Mm -hmm. Now, in Ephesians, just the chapter before, chapter 5, verse 9, he says, live like children who belong to the light. Uh, light brings every kind of goodness, right living and truth. Try to learn what pleases the Lord. And the word is dikeusene, for those who are into Greek. It's the word righteousness. And I, once again, I believe that this is talking about practical, lived out Christian life. Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting thing is about this, of course, it strips. Mm. Now, our life is like that. Mm. There's work, there's, there's the way we treat our children, yeah. the, the way we treat our partner, if, if we have one, our wife. Um, there's our relationships with others. There's uh, our families, Everywhere. there's the way we handle our money. Yeah, there's everywhere. a whole yes. host of, of, if you like, strips of our life. Mm. Now, Roman, uh, when a Roman uh, went into conflict, of course, th there would be sword blows, uh, someone would, uh, would be waving an axe, there'd be arrows flying around, and, and whatever else would be taking place. And if there was a weakness in the armor, if there was a weak spot, it would, in the heat of combat, be exposed. Likewise with us, that uh, for us to be protected uh, in our lives by righteousness, by, by right living, it has to be consistent. Mm -hmm. So the classic example is we can't cheat our boss yes. and expect to be protected. Yes. We can't um, treat our children like dirt or our wives badly and think we might, hey, we might get away with it mm. in terms of what we think other people would think. But if we honestly think that we're going to be protected against the attacks of the enemy, be, uh, and, and we're that inconsistent, we've got, you know, it, we've got another thing coming. In, in other words, uh, following it through the segments, it, mm. it's like removing one of those segments, is, yeah. so so that you are not protected there, mm. and and you know, and, th and that's where the fiery dart can uh, can can, right. can get in. And, and the breastplate was quite comprehensive. You can you can see it. You know, it's mm. over the shoulders. Yes. It's all you know around the back yeah. front. It's, it, it's layer, each layer protects the other layer. It's, it's uh, a, a tremendous mm. bit of kit. I, I, again, I, I suppose I, I, I'm, I, and I really take what you're saying there, and I mm. think you're absolutely right, because it, what is interesting, the more you talk about this, the more I realise that Ephesians 4 and Ephesians 5 mm. have actually laid they, the yeah. ground for this, because it says if you were a liar, don't lie, if you were a thief, don't steal, mm. and in, in other words, change your life yeah, um, yeah. In, in, in that sense. But I think also it's as, as, as good to remember as Christians that Christ is our righteousness, and therefore it's not we are trying to, to be, be something mm -hmm. and, and think we can do it. Yeah, yeah. it. It is to realize he is the one that's, uh, that, that, that is our righteousness, yeah. but that still does not remove us from the responsibility mm -hmm. of saying, I mustn't do that. Well, the, the baseline for a Roman legionary is that he is a Roman legionary. Yes. He's pledged loyalty to the emperor, to the legionary commanders, and on the, at the ground level to the centurion 
and to his the colleagues that he's working with. And he knew his identity, wherever he was in the world, whether he was um, in the wilds of Germany or Scotland or down in the yeah. deserts. And for us as Christians, our identity is as children of God. Absolutely. And if we I, get that wrong, we get everything wrong. Yeah, I, I mean, we, we, we've got an hour and we're, stu we're still running out of time to, to get through. So we're going to have to move on let's and, go, and let's get go, through. Let's go, let's uh, go. Just to say that Bernadette writes in and says, please, can we emphasize the importance of the whole armor of God? We have indeed, I'm glad to do that. Because we are soldiers for Christ fighting a real battle, a spiritual warfare, which we are not aware of uh, w w uh, and prepared for. Because it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Absolutely, yeah, and absolutely. Uh, amen for that. The whole panoply. That everything, the whole bit of it. Mm -hmm. uh, Feet, um, uh, feet shod, um, and, 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 and here again we get, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I like this one. Go on uh, then. But one quick thing about the breastplate of righteousness, yeah. right? It does cover the back. There is a myth. There is a myth. Actually, yes, please, circles, yeah, yeah. Uh, that it doesn't there cover is, the back. Yes. Oh, yes, it oh, does. Oh, yes. And sometimes we need to step out of situations. Sometimes we need to move out of situations. But it is interesting. It does emphasize the breast. In other words, I, I always think that emphasizes the feelings. Of self. Although it does go around the back, as you say, I think the fact that it emphasizes that, I'm, I'm quite, uh, quite keen on. Anyway, but that, all right, okay. I, I can see. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go there, Jess. Yeah, okay, thorax. Yeah, um, actually, is it's where we get the word thorax from. Yeah, sorry, right. it's, that's right. Um, okay. So feet fitted, right? Feet fitted. But now I, I really like this one. The hobnail boots, the caligulae. <laughs> there we are. Look at them. They're yeah, on, they're on the screen now. Okay. I, I looked underneath them, and you would you wouldn't be able to wear them on a football pitch these oh, days. Oh, absolutely not. Be illegal. No. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the Romans were famous, of course, for marching. Uh, the, you know, they, they were the most mobile army. Of course, there were all the roads and everything else like that. But on a, on a, in terms of strategic movement, they were superb. On a battlefield, a Roman legion of 6,000 men could do amazing things, much more disciplined. Mm -hmm. They defeated the Greeks because they could detach units and, mm. you know, they, they, they kept at the Macedonians, give it up the Romans, come on. Anyway, the simple point here, I think, uh, feet fitted to the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. A few things I'll say. Sometimes when it comes to people encouraging us to evangelize, to mm -hmm. reach out to others, I felt it sometimes, and I'm sure I've been a, uh, an implement in making others feel guilty, there can be a lot of pressure. And it's uh, almost like a gospel of agitation, uh, of anxiety, of pressure to perform, and, and these sorts of things. But isn't it amazing? He's talking war language, but he says our feet should be fitted with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And, uh, of course, there's a, an echo of Isaiah, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news, right? And I, I just think that this speaks to us of we've got to be ready. Mm. We've got to be ready every day. Yes. Um, we've got to re be ready to move, uh, be, be ready to march, but it must never be out of an effort to Amen. perform yes. or, to, or we've got to do this. It must come from that glorious shalom, yes, the peace, that peace of, God. of God. And the gospel we bring shouldn't bear the whole marks of condemnation mm. and pointing the finger mm. and re reveling in other people's fate if they don't believe. We bring the gospel Amen. of peace. And it's so amazing, is it? In, in the midst of this warlike illustration, is this peace? the feet of the gospel of peace. It. You're bringing peace mm. into. Yeah, okay. The whole illustration is they were fighting and killing, mm. but mm. for us, that's not it. Us, we need to bring peace. And our warfare uh, is never to be violent. Mm. We never to march in armies and kill people. Mm. We we march in armies to bring peace to people Amen. and to situations. Absolutely vital. Yeah, we need to be ready, never, ne or ever ready, always ready, mm -hmm. but it's to bring peace, not to bring war, not to bring hatred. And it must hatred. come out of peace as well. Amen. In other words, we're at rest, I think. We're that's at peace. Right, that's even right. though we're moving. Yeah, yeah. Even though yeah, we're yeah. running through the battlefield, we're at peace. Not agitated. It, that's right. Not under pressure to Whoa, perform. Whoa, what a, what a place to I be. I love it. I love Amen. It. Amen. Okay. Uh, shield of faith. What a massive oh, shield. Look at that shield. I know, I know. Look at it. Right. And 
can you say this to, to, he talks about the shield of faith for which I can quench every oh thing. yeah there's not one that that doesn't quench you can hide behind it imagine you're a barbarian Doug and you were looking, right? You were looking at the Romans ahead of you. Some mornings when I look in the uh, mirror, I don't have to imagine, I tell you. Yeah, come to think of it, I'm thinking of that <laughs> yeah. now. Anyway, we're looking, at, we're looking at the Romans. Do you know what you would see? You would see a wall of shields. Mm. You might see, like, the heads pop peeping yeah. above, or a, a spear. Um, but you would see a wall of shields. And if anything illustrates this importance of standing together with others, it's the shield. In one sense, in one-to-one -one combat, that shield is impractical. It's big, it's quite heavy, um, and it's not mobile. But it's meant to be interlocked with others. People are aware of the testudo uh, um, uh, formation, where they used to form like a turtle with all the shields around and above. The Romans used to do that, but more importantly, in almost every battle that they had, there was this element of you stood behind your shield and uh, you prepared to fight the enemy, you might move forward, but the, the, the you, you were partly protected by the person's shield who was next to you as well, mm. because you naturally went to one side, one, yeah. because you, ha you had the sword in your right arm, yes. right hand. And this speaks to me of uh, the fact that it's our faith in uh, all that God has done for us. It's our faith that uh, God has placed us in this place, standing here with my shield and my sword and my helmet on, with others. Mm. Right? This is not me and the devil in the Colosseum having a fight. It's 10,000 Romans, might be against 100,000 barbarians, but we aren't worried. Mm. And uh, there is this sense in which Paul talks about standing shoulder to shoulder for the faith of the gospel. That's what this is talking about, mm. that you and I will stand side by side with our shields. To the enemy, we are one. Mm. We are a war. is isn't the picture that you get, I mean, it's, it's true where you, you have this picture where those at the front had the shields, those at the side, and then those in the middle, as they move, they put their shields over well, the top. In, would, in other words, yeah. they moved the shield to where the space was. Yeah, they, they would do that in a test dude of mm. formation. Yes, they would. Yeah. They would. Also, just a, another little uh, legionary point, really. Um, at one stage of, the, of Roman warfare, there were three lines. Yes. Um, the, the, uh, and what would happen in the place of combat, um, the, fir the first line would fight and then we step back, and the second line would come step forward, forward, and they would fight, then they would fall back, and the third line would come forward, and everybody has a rest, mm. because they'd all be working together. Mm. And um, there is this... The lessons, in, you know, from the Roman army and, and the shield in particular are huge for us. Mm. And I sometimes find that Christians, particularly if they're talented, if they're eager, that they, they like, they, they see themselves like gladiators. Mm. But we're not meant to be like that. Mm. We're meant to be together. Amen. And, and yes, and uh, t together and, and, and realising that, yes, somebody else's shield is, is partly covering me. Yeah. And if I yeah. move out and just stand by myself, yeah. um, uh, d Tim, uh, Tim Constable emails, uh, uh, sorry, Tim, I haven't got time. I don't think to read out all the email, uh, but he talks about sort of standing by himself in a, in a business situation, in, in a workplace and putting tracks everywhere. And he got, he got d d dismissed uh, by it, uh, and he realised he was just working by himself. He was just he was just on his own. Uh, he loves the program, and he thoroughly enjoys Marmite. Um, uh, but but it's true, and it, hey, we are together on this, and, and and we we need to be aware of that that yeah. that we do. And if I just step out on my own, I I am a sitting target for for, 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 well, for the is. enemy uh, right. for, from from that and point no of view. No matter what is ranged against us, if we are together, if we're aware of us standing together in Jesus. Um, we outnumber them. Mm. And we really do. Mm. Uh, okay, uh, quickly moving on, uh, the, uh, the helmet of salvation. Well, that's near me, so I'm going to put it on. All go right? on then, go on then. But I have to take my glasses off, my glasses off, yeah. I can... Romans never wore glasses. Uh, I know that, I How know that. How could they see where they were going? I, oh, yeah, who knows? <laughs> oh, you look lovely. Helmet of salvation, this okay. is really good. Yeah. And I, I'm going to look at this on TV later. Oh, yeah. I, know. <laughs> I, can't, I can't tell you how long I've wanted to do this. <laughs> The, this it's heavy because I wore that earlier oh, it on. Heavy, it yeah. is heavy. But the amazing thing about this, the um, just a historical point first of all, that the this is known as the um, 
the Imperial Gallic helmet because the Romans are really good at adapting and learning from other nations. And they obviously had their own helmets that they used to wear, but they nicked much of the idea of this from the Gauls. Mm. Just as their sword came from the Spaniards, it came from the Gauls. So there's, there's a lesson there. But anyway, um, the helmet of salvation. How comprehensive is that? It protects the back, mm. all right? And the, the soldier standing next to Paul would probably have had one of these mm. on. Yeah. Uh, protects the ears, the, the cheeks, so mm. injuries from the side, you know, mm. sword blows and things. There was a thing there, so if a blow came down from above, <laughs> uh, you know, so yes. there it is. Yeah. Um, Paul talks about the helmet in another passage. Yes. It's in Thessalonians. Yes. And he, he talks about, he adds one other word in, which I think makes big sense. He says the hope of salvation. That's right. And uh, the word salvation, soteria, in, in the New Testament, is a big word. We tend to think of it, Christians tend to think of it as being quite a small thing, as having forgiveness of sins and going to heaven. No, it's big. It's really big. And our salvation throughout the pages of the New Testament can be regarded as past, that it was accomplished by Christ on the cross and through the resurrection. It can be regarded as a present possession that we've crossed over from death to life, but it's not completed yet. And our, our, the completion of our salvation is when we are resurrected from the dead and uh, you know, the, the yes. end, end of this age comes. So there is a sense in which this protected by the helmet of salvation to me because it's about the mind and yes, everything else absolutely. as well it's, it's this idea of we need to understand yes what it what God's plan for us is what's going to happen our hope and in Peter it says uh, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that you have mm -hmm. and people say what hope have I got I'm going to go to heaven no 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 it's bigger than that the Christian hope is this that that through the resurrection of Jesus salvation, mm. restoration, comes to the whole cosmos. Mm. Now, if I have that on my head, when people say to me, um, why didn't God do something with the mess that we're in, and the world and trouble and all this sort of thing, I've got my helmet of salvation on. Not that I hunt it down and say, well, don't ask me another tough question, but I, I stand tall and say, mm. uh, God has begun, mm. and he will finish Amen. it. Amen because I know exactly what he's going to do. He will restore everything, yes. and he will make everything better than it was at the beginning. And I think for so many Christians, the mind is the playground of the enemy. Uh, I mean, and, and obviously that can be evil thoughts, it can be bad mm -hmm. thoughts, it can, it, you know, and can lead you astray. But it's also where you begin to doubt God and, and, yeah. and all of that. And that helmet of salvation enables us to know mm. who God and what God has done and said, and we can, we can stand and be protected right. from all that. And stuff. salvation covers all parts of our Amen. being, Amen. all parts of our yes. lives our, and our future as well. Yes. It's a big, big, okay. big thing. Sword of the Spirit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, we the one got they a sword. wouldn't let you have. No, we haven't got a sword. But there it is, ladies and gentlemen, there's a sword, okay? <laughs> it's about two feet long. Uh, gladius, and it was two-edged, mm -hmm. but the main point of it was the point. <laughs> the, yeah. the sword, a Roman sword, which we, he would have had, the soldier standing by Paul would have had, was about two foot long, it was a stabbing sword. Mm -hmm. And it says it's the, it's the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And it wasn't for slashing, it was for choosing the spot and going for it. Yeah. Hiding behind your shield of faith, barbarian coming towards you, you've got your sword, yeah. barbarian falls, okay? And we're to use not only the Scriptures, but the words that God gives us through prophecy Amen. and whatever else, effectively targeted, not condemning people or throwing up Bible verses, but fully equipped with mm. the armour that God gives us mm. and using the sword correctly. JD, we, we really haven't got time to go on. I, I mean, it's been great. I mean, you we've know, missed a bit, Mike. We, I know we've bit. missed. We've got to go on. We can't go on. Maybe when we get back next time, we, we can go on uh, a little bit more. But um, one, one of the things, I, somebody did text in, why, when I talk to Jesus, does he not talk back to me? Um, could I say, in a couple of weeks' time, I think it is, uh, we'll be dealing about hearing the voice of God. So make sure uh, you uh, come in uh, on that and, and how can we hear uh, the voice of God. Um, next week, um, we'll be starting what we hope will be something of a, a series with um, Tom, Tom Jacko, here on Simply the Truth, uh, next Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock, where we go about what does the Bible say 
and next week we're going to be looking at the whole area of what does the Bible say about hell uh, and then each time we do that we'll be looking at another area of it so lots of great things to come uh, from, uh, from from simply the truth. So it, it's goodbye from 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 Gladius over here. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you for, for for watching. Appreciate JT being here. And indeed, see you again next week, seven o'clock. Don't miss it. Get into the word. Let the word get into you. Bye.